Good morning everybody. Um, I want to do something a bit different this morning. I'd like to tell you a story that was sent to me a while ago and really resonated with me at the time. And I thought that uh, some of you might appreciate it this morning too. So I'd like to tell you the story. It's called Fly Eagle Fly. A farmer went out one day to search for a lost calf. The little herd boys had come back without it in the evening before, and that night there had been a terrible storm. He went to the valley and searched. He searched by the riverbed, he searched among the reeds, behind the rocks and in the rushing water. He wandered over the hillside and through the dark and tangled forests where everything began, then out again along the muddy cattle tracks. He searched in the long thatched grass, taller than his own head. He climbed the slopes of the high mountain with its rocky cliffs rising to the sky. He called out all the time, hoping that the calf might hear, but also because he felt so alone. His shouts echoed off the cliffs, the river roared in the valley below. He climbed up a gully in case the calf had huddled there to escape the storm. And there was where he stopped, for there on a ledge of rock, Close enough to touch, he saw the most unusual sight, an eagle chick, very young, hatched from, an, from its egg a day or two before, and then blown from its nest by the terrible storm. He reached out and cradled it in both hands. He would take it home and care for it, and home he went, still calling, calling in case the calf might hear. He was almost home when the children ran out to meet him. The calf came back by itself, they shouted. He was very pleased. He showed the eagle chick to his wife and children, then placed it carefully in the warm kitchen among the hens and chicks and under the watchful eye of the roosters. The eagle is the king of the birds, he said, but we shall train it to be a chicken. So the eagle lived among the chickens, learning their ways. His children called their friends to see the strange bird, for as it grew, living on the bits and pieces put out for the chickens, it began to look quite different from any chicken they had ever seen. One day, a friend dropped in for a visit. He and the farmer sat at the door of the kitchen hut, smoking their pipes. The friend saw the bird among the chickens. Hey, that's not a chicken, it's an eagle. The farmer smiled at him and said, Of course it's a chicken. Look, it walks like a chicken, it talks like a chicken, it eats like a chicken, it thinks like a chicken, of course it's a chicken. But the friend was not convinced. I will show you that it is an eagle, he said. Go ahead, said the farmer. The farmer's children helped his friend catch the bird. It was fairly heavy, but he lifted it above his head and said, You are not a chicken, but an eagle. You belong to the earth, but to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. The bird stretched out its wings as the farmer and his family had seen it do before, but it looked about, saw the chickens feeding and jumped down to scratch with them for food. I told you it was a chicken, the farmer said and roared with laughter. Next day, the friend was back. Farmer. He said, I will prove to you that this is no chicken but an eagle. Bring me a ladder. With the large bird under one arm, he struggled up the slippery thatch of the tallest hut. The farmer doubled over with laughter. It eats chicken food. It thinks like a chicken. It is a chicken. The friend, swaying on top of the hut, took the eagle's head, pointed it to the sky and said, You are not a chicken but an eagle. You belong not to the earth but to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. Again, the great bird stretched out its wings, trembled, the, and its, it trembled and the claws that clasped his hand opened. Fly, eagle, fly, the man cried. But the bird scrambled out of his hands, slipped down the thatch and sailed in among the chickens. There was much laughter. Very early the next morning, on the third day, the farmer's dogs began to bark. A voice was calling outside in the darkness. The farmer ran to the door. It was his friend again. Give me one more chance with the bird, he, he begged. Do you know the time? It's long before dawn. Are you crazy? Come with me, fetch the bird. Reluctantly, the farmer went into the kitchen, stepping over his sleeping children, and picked up the bird, which was fast asleep among the chickens. The two men set off, disappearing into the darkness. Where are we going? asked the farmer sleepily. To the mountains where you found the bird. And why at this ridiculous time of the night? So that our eagle may see the sun rise over the mountain and follow it into the sky where it belongs. They went into the valley and crossed the river. 
the friend leading the way. The bird was very heavy and too large to carry comfortably, but, but the friend insisted on taking it himself. Hurry, he said, or the dawn will arrive before we do. The first light crept into the sky as they began to climb the mountain. Below them they could see the river snaking like a long, thin ribbon through the golden grasslands, the forest and the veld, stretching down towards the sea. The wispy clouds in the sky were pink at first and then began to shimmer with a golden brilliance. Sometimes their path was dangerous as it clung to the side of the mountain, crossing narrow shelves of rock and taking them into dark crevices and out again. They were both panting, especially the friend who was carrying the bird. At last, he said, this will do. He looked down the cliff and saw the ground thousands of feet below. They were very near the top. Carefully, the friend carried the bird onto a ledge of rock. He set it down so that it looked towards the east and began talking to it. The farmer chuckled. It talks only chicken talk. But the friend talked on, telling the bird about the sun, how it gives life to the world, how it rains in the heavens, giving light to each new day. Look at the sun eagle, and when it rises, rise with it. You belong to the sky, not to the earth. At that moment, the sun's first rays shot out over the mountain and suddenly the world was ablaze with light. The golden sun rose majestically, dazzling them. The great bird stretched out its wings to greet the sun and feel the life-giving warmth on its feathers. The farmer was quiet. The friend said, You belong not to the earth but to the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. He clambered back to the farmer. All was silent. Nothing moved. The eagle's head stretched up, its wings stretched outwards, its legs leaned forwards as its claws clutched the rock. And then, without really moving, feeling the updraft of a wind more powerful than any man or bird, the great eagle leaned forward and was swept upward, higher and higher, lost to sight in the brightness of the rising sun, never again to live among the chickens. And I don't know whether you ever feel like that, the, those chickens just pecking around, scrabbling around, um, but feeling deep down inside you that there's more and that God has got more and that you were made for more. Um, and if that's you this morning, I just want to pray that you uh, will connect with God today and that he will just show you how he wants you to be soaring um, and be encouraged that we have been made in God's image and we have been made for amazing things um, and yeah fly <laughs>